Welcome to the NICU Radiology Casebook Series. Case 1 is a case of respiratory distress in a 31 and 6 sevenths weeks gestation newborn twin infant. Our patient is a 31 and 6 sevenths weeks gestation firstborn preterm infant girl of a spontaneous diamniotic dichorionic twin pregnancy. She was born to a 27-year-old G1P2 mother with prenatal screens, blood type O negative, antibody negative, RPR non-reactive, rubella immune, hepatitis B surface antigen negative, GBS unknown and cystic fibrosis negative. Pregnancy was complicated by an incompetent cervix with cervical shortening at 20 weeks gestation and worsening pregnancy-induced hypertension with elevated blood pressures, proteinuria, abnormal liver function tests, and thrombocytopenia. Medications during pregnancy included prenatal vitamins, Rogam, betamethasone, and magnesium sulfate. Delivery was by urgent caesarean section under spinal analgesia for worsening pregnancy-induced hypertension and twin gestation with transverse lie in the second twin. Rupture of membranes was at delivery with clear amniotic fluid. The patient was born with cephalic presentation cried at delivery with a heart rate greater than 100 per minute, good respiratory effort without respiratory distress, fair tone and acrocyanosis. APGARs were 8 at 1 minute and 8 at 5 minutes of age. However, at 13 minutes of age, she appeared cyanotic and was noted to have respiratory distress with tachypnea, intermittent expiratory grunting and mild intercostal retractions with fair aeration bilaterally in auscultation. Oxygen saturation was 65% in room air. She was started on bubble CPAP and oxygen in the delivery suite with immediate improvement and was transported to the NICU for further management. The infant was placed in cardiorespiratory monitoring and was made NPO. A nasogastric tube was inserted. A peripheral IV line was placed and D10 infusion was initiated. The initial capillary blood gas on bubble CPAP of 5 cm of water and FiO2 0.3 had a pH of 7.27 and PCO2 of 54. The infant received a loading dose of caffeine citrate. A sepsis evaluation was performed with a CBC and blood culture in view of the unknown GBS status and respiratory distress, and IV antibiotics were started empirically. There was no leukocytosis or left shift. Here is the admission chest x-ray. Please pause the presentation while you answer the following questions. What are your findings on the admission chest x-ray? What is your differential diagnosis based on the information you have available? This is a portable AP chest x-ray of our patient with the correct right-left orientation. The film is mildly rotated, as can be seen by the asymmetric positioning of the clavicles and anterior ribs. The nasogastric tube is in place with the tip terminating in the stomach. Bubble CPAP is in place with well-expanded lung fields with nine posterior ribs visible. The cardiac silhouette appears normally placed. There is a grand glass appearance of both lung fields and a suggestion of air bronchograms bilaterally, which together are suggestive of surfactant deficiency. This finding in our preterm infant is called respiratory distress syndrome. This was also historically known as highline membrane disease due to the histological appearance of the lungs. Primary surfactant deficiency occurs more frequently in premature infants less than 34 weeks gestational age, but can also occur in older infants, especially if the mother had diabetes during her pregnancy. Surfactant deficiency can also occur as a result of meconium aspiration, asphyxia, sepsis, and rare genetic disorders of surfactant production. Chest X-ray appearances in the above conditions are often indistinguishable from each other. The patient's history and clinical findings, along with the radiographic and laboratory tests, help determine the diagnosis in most cases. Three characteristic features of respiratory distress syndrome on chest x-ray are low lung volumes, air bronchograms, and a fine granular pattern in the lung fields, also referred to as a grand glass appearance. These findings are progressive, but may be altered by respiratory support such as bubble CPAP or mechanical ventilation and surfactant therapy. 
Prenatal steroid therapy in the mother may also ameliorate the severity of RDS in the preterm infant. Severe RDS may be associated with the pacifications of the lung fields, making them indistinguishable from the cardiac silhouette. Our patient remained on bubble CPAP of 5 cm of water and successfully weaned off oxygen to room air within 6 hours of age. She remained stable until around 45 hours of age. At this time, she was noted to have an increasing oxygen requirement to maintain saturations in the target range, with increased tachypnea and moderate intercostal retractions while on bubble CPAP. She was intubated in anticipation of surfactant administration. Here is her post-intubation chest x-ray. Please pause the presentation while you answer the following questions. What are the findings on her post-intubation chest x-ray? What is your differential diagnosis? What interventions could you consider at this stage? As you can see, this is a portable AP chest x-ray of our patient with correct right-left orientation. The film is mildly rotated, as can be seen by the asymmetric positioning of the clavicles and anterior ribs. This can make interpretation of the chest x-ray challenging. The nasogastric tube is in place, with the tip terminating in the stomach. The endotracheal tube is in good position and appears to be in the mid-trachea. The obvious abnormality is the large pneumothorax on the left. You can easily see the edge of the collapsed left lung and the pleural reflection. Due to the degree of rotation of this chest x-ray, it's difficult to confirm if the trachea is deviated to the right, as would be expected with the left tension pneumothorax. You can also see worsening of the grand glass opacification of the right lung field with overexpansion of the lung with 10 posterior ribs visible. When you are assessing a chest x-ray for a pneumothorax, look for evidence of free air. This may be manifested by an overall lucent appearance of the lung field compared to the contralateral side, or by a line of demarcation between the dense edge of the collapsed lung and the more lucent pneumothorax. The chest x-ray may confirm your physical exam findings, which can include decreased breath sounds and transillumination of the affected hemithorax. Assess the position of the trachea and mediastinum to assess if the pneumothorax is under tension. The trachea and mediastinum will shift away from the side of a tension pneumothorax. The tracheal deviation may also be apparent on your physical exam. A lateral film may be useful. Infants lie flat, therefore free air will be anteriorly placed and may not always be clearly visible in an AP film. Be aware of artefacts such as skin folds or overlying equipment which may mimic the appearance of a pneumothorax. Our patient required needle thoracentesis twice with evacuation of 46 millilitres and 25 millilitres of air respectively with complete resolution of the left pneumothorax and follow-up chest x-ray. She did not require chest tube placement. Endotracheal surfactant was also administered for RDS. She remained on assisted ventilator support for 36 hours after which she was successfully extubated to room air and subsequently remained stable with no reaccumulation of the pneumothorax. She also completed a 48-hour sepsis rule-out with negative blood cultures. This completes this presentation. Upon completion of this module, clinicians will be able to identify respiratory distress in a preterm infant, formulate a differential diagnosis for respiratory distress based on the clinical information available, interpret a radiograph to diagnose respiratory distress syndrome and pneumothorax, and plan appropriate medical interventions.